Assalamu alaikum. This is lecture number 12 in Pakistan studies. The title of this lecture is Major Political Developments in 1945 and 46. This lecture will be divided into five parts. First, the political situation in 1945. Second, the elections of 1945 and 46. The third section is the cabinet mission plan and its recommendations and attitude or response of the political parties. Four, the interim government that was set up in 1946. And the last section will deal with the Constituent Assembly that held its first session in December 1946. Let's now take up the first part of the lecture, that is the political situation in 1945. You will recall that in lecture number 11, we talked about the Lahore Resolution or the Pakistan Resolution that in 1940 the Muslim League demanded a separate country, a separate state and a separate homeland for the Muslims of this subcontinent. And when this resolution was passed, World War II was going on. The Second World War started in September 1939 and by March 1940 it was well on way. During this period, 40, 1940 onwards, the desire of the British government was to seek the cooperation of Indian leaders for their war efforts. India, being the colony of the British, was involved in, in the Second World War because the British were part of the war. Now the desire of the British government was that the major political parties like the Congress, the Muslim League, should join hands with the British government in pursuing the war. The Congress was not cooperative because Congress had launched non-cooperation movement in 1940 and 41 and in 42 the Congress had launched the quit India movement that the British should quit India, leave India and power should be handed over to an Indian government which for all practical purposes meant the Congress party. The British made certain political offers in what is described as August 1940 offer and then the Crips mission of 1942. These were the two proposals which were designed to seek Indian cooperation by offering them a political future in which they were to play a very vital and significant role. They were to have ultimately dominion status, a constituent assembly and for that they wanted their cooperation. Two issues from the British point of view were important by 1945. One was the issue of expansion of the executive council, executive council of the viceroy. And second issue that cropped up in the early 40s, 1940, 41 and onwards, was the issue of the defense council which the British wanted to set up. These issues were there, especially the expansion of the executive council 
and in 1940 Lord Wavell was appointed Viceroy of India. Wavell had earlier been Commander in Chief of the British Indian Army and now an ex soldier had been appointed the Viceroy because the British thought that a soldier as Viceroy would be more effective. So after becoming the Viceroy, he came to India. He knew India because he had served in India as the Chief of the Armed Forces, CNC. He entered into negotiations with the Indian leaders, both the Muslim League, the Congress and uh, other leaders. And in 1945, he decided to summon a conference of the Indian leaders at Shimla. In June and July of 1945, the Viceroy, Lord Wavell, met with the leaders of India, uh, Indian Congress and the Muslim League. And the issue was primarily the expansion of the Executive Council against the total backdrop of seeking Indian cooperation for the war efforts. The basic question before the leaders at Shimla was how to provide representation to different communities in the Executive Council. The British government was inclined towards providing equal representation to Muslims and the upper caste Hindus. Then other Hindu community, that is low caste, and other communities were to be given representation, which means that non-Muslims would have more representation for understandable reasons, because that was more population. The major dispute arose, who would nominate the Muslims to the Executive Council? The Muslim League wanted to nominate all Muslim members because the Muslim League claim was that it is the sole representative of the Muslims. Therefore, it should have right to nominate all Muslim representatives. This claim was contested by the Congress Party. Congress Party demanded that at least one member for the Muslim seats should be nominated by them, that is the Congress, that Congress should also nominate some Muslim because the argument given by Congress was that it could not allow Muslim League to nominate all Muslims because Congress, according to Congress leadership, represented all communities all over India. And since it also claimed to represent Muslims, it should nominate a Muslim member. The British government, that is British Indian government, was inclined towards providing some representation to the Chief Minister of Punjab, Khizr Hayat Khan Tawana. The reason being that India as a whole was involved in war efforts in helping the British government for the war. But in case of Punjab, the government was extending all possible support. For example, Indian troops were fighting during Second World War as they did in the First World War. Then there were new recruitments 
and a large number of recruitments were being done from provinces especially from the province of Punjab therefore the British government was inclined to reward the Punjab government but the Muslim League was contesting this issue the Muslim League argument was that only Muslim League has the right to represent Muslims the British Indian government offered a proposal that these parties the Congress the Muslim League can submit a list of members for the executive council the names may be more than the seats allocated to them and then the viceroy will select that this kind of arrangement was not possible therefore there was no agreement on the issue of who would nominate the members to the executive council especially the Muslim seats and this conference increased the differences between the Congress and the Muslim League on the political issues if we go back slightly if we go back to 1944 we find that in 1944 Congress side and the Muslim League had a dialogue this was essentially between Mahatma Gandhi and Qaid -e Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah on the issue of settling the political question and the problem here was that the Muslim League the party of the Muslims described Muslims as a nation and emphasized Pakistan as a separate state as their demand which Gandhi was not willing to accept that effort in 44 1944 did not succeed now in 1945 at Shimla as we are discussing the Shimla conference the same problem cropped up the Muslim League representing the Muslim demanded the right to nominate Muslim members and it was working against the backdrop of the demand for a separate state or separate homeland for the Muslims therefore the Shimla conference could not produce the desired results however the Shimla conference of 1945 made it very clear that the two major political parties the Congress and the Muslim League were going into different directions their world view their vision of India's future their thinking about the future constitution and the present arrangement were so wide apart that they were finding it difficult to agree on a formula which satisfied the both after the failure of the Shimla conference to produce an agreement Lord Wavell who was the viceroy at that time announced that new elections would be held very soon in India and this is the second part of our lectures that is the elections in 1945 and 46 so the viceroy said the elections would soon be held and he also decided to go to England for consultations on return from there he made certain political announcements which pertain to the political future of India and the general elections the announcement included one 
that there will be a self-government with the cooperation of the Indian leaders. Second, new elections will be held in the winter, the coming winter, which means the winter of 1945 and 46. Third, that new provincial governments would be set up in the provinces after elections. Fourth, the fourth recommendation was that a constituent assembly would be established and that constituent assembly will decide and will settle the basis on which constitution was to be framed. And the last recommendation was that executive council would be set up and it would provide representation to all major political parties. If you look at these proposals, these were in a way extending the political ideas that were being presented by the British from 1940 onward and those were adapted keeping in view the demands of the Indian leaders. For example, it was very clearly stated that there will be a self-government, a government run by Indians themselves. Then the elections which Muslim League wanted and also constituent assembly and the most important thing was that the basis of the constitution will be settled. How that constitution is to be framed. This provided some scope to the Muslim League to present its point of view as the basis of the constitution. Its point of view means that the Muslims wanted a separate state as presented in the 1940 resolution of the Muslim League. Now we move on to the next section which deals with the elections. That is the elections which the British government had announced. You would recall that earlier provincial elections were held in 1937 and now in 1945 and 46 new elections were to be held. In these elections, Muslim League had two major issues to project. Although they were talking of a lot of other things, but everything boiled down to two major issues. One, the Muslim League claimed that it is the sole representative of the Muslims of India. No other party could claim to represent Muslims, sole representative of Muslims of this subcontinent. The second issue that was raised in election campaign in 45 and 46 was that the Muslim League's ultimate goal, ultimate objective is the establishment of Pakistan, a separate state for Muslims of South Asia. The Muslim League engaged in massive campaigning 
throughout India, in all provinces, whether Muslim majority provinces or Muslim minority provinces, it was a massive campaign primarily around these two issues. And in this campaigning, Muslim students and their organizations, like Muslim Student Federation, played an important role in putting forward the message of the Muslim League. These students, the present and the former students of the Muslim University Aligarh, which had become the main center of Muslim education and intellectual development, where students were coming from all provinces of India, the Muslim students were going there. So the existing students at that time and the old students participated very effectively for Muslim campaigning. Then Muslim students studying in provinces also went to villages, went to different parts of their own province and presented the, the Muslim League demand that they want Pakistan. And it was during this period that uh, Muslim League message really went across India to all provinces. And in election campaign, the Muslim League raised Islamic slogans. Slogans like, if you are a Muslim, come to Muslim League. And that establishment of Pakistan is a struggle for the rights of the Muslims. On the other hand, the Congress party claimed to represent all Indians irrespective of religion. It argued that it stood for all communities. That was the first theme. And the second theme was that it talked about an independent and undivided India, united India, independent um, India, that was the main objective of the Congress. So they were going ahead to the popular level with two different kind of um, agendas. Now let's take up the election results. First, we'll take up the central legislature whose election was held in December 1945. And this was an indirect election. Muslim League won all the 30 Muslim seats. The Muslim League was contesting only for Muslim seats. And it, in 1945, it won all 30 Muslim seats. So far as Congress is concerned, Congress won most of the other seats. It won 57 seats, but some seats went to other organization. In this way, in the central legislature, two major political forces emerged the Muslim League, which won the Muslim seats. And it could now claim to speak for the Muslims. The other major party was the Congress party that won leading seats, the largest number of seats, reserved for non-Muslims. Now let's take up the provincial elections. Provincial elections were held in February 1946. As I said earlier, the, the earlier elections were held in provinces in September 1937. So now you have the second election at the provincial level. 
Now, if you look at the election results at the provincial level, what you find is that the Muslim League won most of the seats at the provincial level. Not all, but most of the seats at the provincial level. And I give you a few examples to substantiate the uh, point. In case of the province of Punjab, the Muslim majority province, 86 seats were reserved for Muslims. Out of 86, the Muslim League won 75. And four members joined the Muslim League later on. In case of Bengal, another Muslim majority province, Muslim League obtained 113 seats out of 119 reserved for Muslims. In Sindh, in province of Sindh, the province that came into existence in 1935, before 1935, Sindh was part of Bombay province. In 1935, Sindh became a separate, a distinct province and it was a Muslim majority province. In the 46 elections that we are discussing, Muslim League got 28 seats out of 35 seats in Sindh. In fact, there was another election held later on in December 46 in Sindh and in that election it captured all the 35 seats but in February 46 it captured 28 seats. In the case of Northwestern Frontier Province the Muslim League obtained 17 out of 38 seats and in the Frontier Province the Khodai Khidmatgar, a local provincial party, was the leading party in the elections. If we look at these election results, it's an impressive performance by the Muslim League, especially when you compare this with the performance of the Muslim League in 1937 elections. In 1937 elections, it could not perform in Muslim majority provinces. In 1946, it swept the Muslim seats in the Muslim majority provinces. And its performance in Muslim minority provinces for Muslim seats was equally commendable and equally impressive. That really changed the fate of the Muslim League and after this election, after the 1946 election, the representative and democratic credentials of the Muslim League became strong. It could now claim to be the representative and spokesman for the Muslims of South Asia because it captured most of the seats of Muslims in provinces as well as at the federal level. Now look at the ministry formation in provinces. In case of Sindh, a Muslim League ministry was installed and as I said earlier another election was held in Sindh in December and then again Muslim League ministry. In the case of Northwest Frontier Province, here Khodai Khidmat Garg formed ministry with the support of the Congress party and Dr. Khan Abdul Sattar Khan became the chief minister. In case of Bengal, the Muslim League formed a coalition ministry. 
in the Punjab, another Muslim majority province, the Muslim League had captured the largest number of seats in the assembly, but it did not have a very clear majority, although its leadership claimed that it had now won more support. However, the Unionist Party, the Akalis, and the Congress joined together to form a government in Punjab under the leadership of Khizar Hayat Tawana, who was chief minister before this election. And again, he became a chief minister here in the Punjab. It was a coalition government of the Unionist Party. However, the Muslim League had shown its credentials. And another impressive performance by the Muslim League came when it held convention of its elected members in Delhi in April 1946. In April 1946, all the elected members of the Muslim League, whether they were elected to the Central Assembly or they were elected to any provincial assembly, they gathered in Delhi in April 1946 and held their convention. In this Delhi convention, they reiterated their support for the demand of Pakistan that they want a separate state of Pakistan for themselves. This was their demand since 1940. Second, they also agreed that they would resist any attempt to impose a constitution and they would like to have a separate constituent assembly that would form the constitution for Pakistan. In this convention, it was also very clearly stated that they want a state rather than the use of the word states. In the case of Lahore Resolution, the word states was used, but here in this convention of Muslim League representatives, they had a new resolution approved, and that resolution talked of establishment of a separate state for Muslims of northwest of India, where Muslim majority provinces are there, and also Bengal, where Muslims were in a majority. So in a way, now they were clearly stating their objective in that resolution. And this resolution was moved by Hussein Shaheed Sorabardi, who ultimately became Pakistan's, foreign, uh, Pakistan's Prime Minister in the post-independence period. Now we move on to the third section of our lecture today, and that deals with the cabinet mission plan. Cabinet mission that came to India in 1946, in March 1946, was another attempt on the part of the British government to create a framework, a political framework within which the future political and constitutional setup for India would be based, the kind of institutions that were to be created. So for that purpose, for consultations with the Indian leaders, with the government, Indian government in Delhi, they were here for consultations and seek their opinion. 
this cabinet mission comprised three people, three British people. One, Pethick Lawrence, who was Secretary of State for India at that time. Second, Stafford Cripps. And you all remember that we have talked about the Cripps mission in 1942. So Sir Stafford Cripps comes back again. The third member of the cabinet mission was A.V. Alexander. And these three people with cabinet status came to India, talked to different leaders. And then in May 1946, they presented their recommendations, their proposals, which are important to understand the political situation in 1946 and also the British thinking about the political future of India. Now I will give you some important recommendations or some important proposals of the cabinet mission plan that the recommendation which they made for the British government, for the Indian political parties and for the Indian government in Delhi. Its first recommendation was that there will be an Indian Union, which means Indian Federation, Indian Union that will consist of provinces and princely states. Both will be part of the union which would be created under the cabinet mission uh, proposal. In case of the center, the cabinet mission recommended that center will have certain defined functions and center will deal with foreign affairs, defense, communication and taxation. These areas would be the exclusive domain of, of the center. The next recommendation was, which is the third, that subjects, areas other than these would be handed over to the provinces or the provincial governments. Fourth recommendation was that there will be a legislature and executive that will comprise the representative of the provinces and the princely states. In, a, in other words, it will be a representative legislature that would represent provinces and the states. The fifth recommendation was that no legislation on communal affairs will be made if the majority of the two community are not present in the assembly and they don't vote in favor of that particular proposal or law. Which means that if something is before the legislature and both communities have to have their majority of the members and that majority and that majority must vote in favor of such a resolution or such a um, law. This was a kind of a safeguard for the community, especially the minority community. The sixth recommendation pertained to the grouping of provinces, which was the most significant and innovative proposal made by the cabinet mission. It divided the groups into three 
units. One group A, this included the Hindu majority provinces. Group B included the Muslim majority areas in northwest, northwestern India, which included the provinces like Punjab, Northwest Frontier Province, Sindh, and ultimately Balochistan, although Balochistan was not a province at that time. Group C, the third group included the Muslim majority areas in the east, Bengal, and along with that Assam. So this grouping, A, B, C, A was the Hindu majority areas, B and C were the Muslim majority areas. And if you look at the establishment of Pakistan in 1947, you will find that most of the areas of group B and group C become Pakistan. But we'll talk about that later on. The seventh major recommendation of the cabinet mission plan was that each of the three groups that is the groups which I have mentioned, each of the group could decide what they would deal individually, that is the province, how these provinces would deal individually, or what should be managed by the provinces at the group level. It was a decision which they had to uh, make and they could decide, if they wished, about a constitution or political arrangement for each of the group. The eighth recommendation was that after 10 years, the provinces, through their legislature, that is, through the vote of the legislature, decide whether they want to continue or want a review of the relationship with the union, that is India, it implied that a group or province could quit or leave the Indian Union. The ninth proposal was that a constituent assembly will be elected by the provincial assemblies and the seats will be divided amongst three major communities, Muslims, Hindus and others. And the elections would be held on the basis of separate electorate. And the tenth major recommendation of the cabinet mission plan was that an interim government will be set up under the cabinet mission plan that will see to it that steps for implementation of other recommendations are taken up. Now let's quickly take up the reaction of the two major political parties. The Muslim League was not fully satisfied with all the recommendations. However, the idea of grouping of provinces and then the option to review the relationship with the union gave a hope for realization of the Pakistan goal. That is, they will have the option and they could review the relationship and if they wish, they could quit the Indian Union. So that was something which uh, was acceptable under the given circumstances along with reservations by the Muslim League. And the Muslim League accordingly 
accepted the cabinet mission plan with the reservations and with the assertion that ultimate goal is Pakistan. So far as the Congress was concerned, Congress was critical of the groupings, the three groups that the British had proposed in the cabinet mission and also the right of the provinces to ask for the review of the constitutional relationship because they felt that some of the provinces or groups may opt out of the union and that was not something that was desirable from the point of view of the Congress party which wanted United India and which was not in favor of establishment of a separate homeland for the Muslims of this subcontinent. The Congress, however, agreed to become part of the process of elections, but it argued that it would go into the constituent assemblies without reservations and once it is in the constituent assembly, it could frame any constitution, it could discard the provisions of the cabinet mission plan, it was free to do anything it wished once it is in the Constituent Assembly. This is what alarmed the Muslim League, which means that if the Congress goes into the Constituent Assembly, it could do away with the groupings. It could do away with the option of review. So the Congress uh, response perturbed and upset the Muslim League. However, they began to deliberate on the question of setting up of the interim government. And in case of interim government, negotiations started with the two political parties. The Congress was not willing to join the interim government. As Congress was not willing, the British government postponed the idea, which again was something going back on the commitment from the Congress and the Muslim League point of view. The Muslim League also decided to withdraw its approval of the, uh, of the cabinet mission plan on the plea that the Congress acceptance with conditions created a different situation and also the question of postponement of the cabinet mission and the interim government. The new negotiations were started and then in August these negotiations went on and in September the Congress set up an interim government, Congress decided to become part of the interim government. Initially, Muslim League stayed out of the interim government. However, they realized that this will create problems for them. Therefore, they decided to become part of the interim government. Let me conclude by saying that by October 1946, both the Congress and Muslim League were in the interim government. Rest of the developments will be taken up in our next lecture. Khuda Hafiz, until we meet again.